So a biotech firm made a smallpox-like virus on purpose, and nobody seems to care. Everyone, Johnny Storm, don't speak news. Well, this is news you're probably not going to hear about anywhere else. Not many people are talking about it because nobody noticed it at the time. This was February of 2020. Well, at that time, if you remember, we had the Wuhan stuff going on, people falling out from the COVID, right? And all that was distracting us and keeping us away from this news right here. So like I've said many times, you know, you always have to look around to see what else is going on when the media, the mainstream media, that is, wants all of your attention on one thing, which they did at the time, of course. So I didn't notice this either, and I have not seen this reported on, so we're just going to get right into it. From the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, uh, a biotech firm made this smallpox-like virus on purpose, and nobody seemed to care at the time, and nobody still does, it seems, but they might soon. In 2017, the virologist David Evans made headlines when he used synthetic biology to recreate the extinct horsepox virus, which is closely related to the virus that causes smallpox, a disease eradicated in 1980. Evans and his team, ordering the genetic material they needed through the mail, reportedly spent $100,000 on the research, an amount that seems small given the momentous implications of their work. No question if it's possible with horsepox, it's also possible with smallpox, according to German virologist Gerd Suter. That's what he told Science Magazine in a press account of Evans' work. A number of biosecurity experts and even the Washington Post editorial board joined him in voicing their concerns, rightfully so, I'd say. Given the reaction Evans met, one might expect the news that yet another microbe related to the smallpox virus had been synthesized and that it would set off similar alarm bells, but it didn't. Yet when the American biotech company that funded Evans Horsepox work, to Tonics Pharmaceuticals, just call it toxin, guys. I mean, come on, really? Play on words again. They love to do that. Well, they announced this January, which would have been January 2020, that it had successfully synthesized just such a microbe, vaccinia, and no one seemed to take note. So since the World Health Organization eradicated smallpox, causing variola virus from nature, the only known samples of it have been held in two high security facilities in the US and Russia. But developments in synthetic biology, a field which includes the art and science of constructing viral genomes, similar to what they did with COVID guys, have made it possible to create the smallpox virus in a lab. While there's no evidence that anyone has done that yet, as Tonic's work indicates, researchers are inching incredibly close to that line. Before it was eradicated, smallpox was responsible for 300 million deaths in the 20th century. So the reintroduction of the disease, whether it's through negligence or malice, would be a global health disaster. As I wrote in International Security 10 years ago, uh, global biosecurity can be endangered, not just by biological warfare and bioterrorism, but also by laboratory accidents with dangerous pathogens. So Tonix announced this new synthetic vaccinia virus quietly, bearing the news in a press release for a poster that the firm uh, presented at the American Society for Microbiology's annual Biodefense Science and Policy Conference. The poster focused on the progress the company was making in testing Evans' synthetic horsepox virus for use as a vaccine against smallpox, which Tonix calls TNX-801. But there's another one based on a synthetic version of this vaccine virus that Tonix is calling TNX-1200. Now, while the vaccinia and horsepox viruses are not themselves serious threats to human health, there are several reasons why this new development in synthetic biology is problematic. So I'll let you read the rest on your own, but guys, this is dangerous territory. They're basically creating disease, synthetic versions of diseases that have killed hundreds of millions of people. So what happens when a synthetic version completely foreign to people, never been in people before. We don't know what it's going to do. Just because you make it to look like and, and act like the old virus, who knows what kind of dangers this could present. And yet they're working on it. And they've been working on it for, well, since 2017, according to this article. So five plus years. And nobody's saying boo about it. In the meantime... There's evidence that U.S.-run biolabs in Ukraine were experimenting with smallpox and Ebola. 
Now there's rumors of monkeypox experiments at U.S. Ram Bio Labs in Ukraine as well. This is at my website, don'tspeaknews.com. I just put this up a little bit ago. So you want to take a look at that one. As a key Russian lawmaker revealed the illicit research in a press release last Friday here on TASS. U.S. research Ebola and smallpox viruses in Ukraine. According to Irina Yorovia, co-chair of the Parliamentary Commission on Investigation of U.S. Biological Laboratories in Ukraine. She said, today, we presented an analysis of which pathogens the U.S. was particularly interested in in Ukraine. She said, aside from the pathogens that are territorial, territorially bound to Ukraine, the laboratory's research virus and pathogens that are endemically very far from Ukraine, such as Ebola and smallpox. And they were doing all this, guys, because they can't do these type of experiments here in the States. It would be illegal. So they're doing them anywhere else that they can overseas. And then we have this report, this bombshell report coming out. Monkeypox appears to be a lab strain with unknown characteristics, according to the European Center for Disease Control. This comes as Russia Investigative Committee accuses U.S. of conducting illegal research into smallpox and Ebola, which I just showed you right here on don'tspeaknews.com. So the monkeypox outbreak currently springing up in countries around the world appears to originate from a lab strain, according to a source at the European Center for Disease Control. Independent investigator Dr. Benjamin Braddock claimed on Twitter that a source at the CDDC, or ECDC, excuse me, told him that preliminary analysis of the monkeypox found that the virus came from a lab and may be related to the U.S. biological research in Ukraine. This source tells me that the preliminary analysis of the monkeypox indicates that it is a third lab strain with unknown characteristics. And there's chatter about this being somehow related to Moscow's charges against U.S. biological activities in Ukraine. Now, you put this together with the synthetic smallpox viruses and everything else they've been working on. Well, what do you get? Well, truly at this point, God only knows. So some people are saying that this is you know, side effects from the vaccinations and that it's really just cases of shingles breaking out. Well, I've had a mild case of shingles and it was on my torso, it wasn't on my arms and feet and so on. So it's hard to say right now, but this is, I'm just reporting what I'm finding here, guys. So I did check out this Twitter thread and here it is. It says here that a Russian Chinese joint task force has been tasked with establishing where it originated, whether it is detectable in research conducted by the US in Ukraine, Georgia, or whether there's a link to biological research conducted by the US on smallpox in Ukraine. So the main um, European Center for Disease Control focus right now is buying up as much of BN's vaccine as possible. And they're buying it up before they even know if it's effective against this strain of monkeypox. And he says, I wouldn't be surprised if they skip testing its efficacy altogether because they're in a panic. The question is why are they in a panic? And I found this um, synthetic version of the smallpox right here in this Twitter thread. So you never know what you're going to find in these threads, guys. That's why you have to go through them. So this live horsepox virus vaccine from COVID was an application of earlier work by David Evan and Tonix or Toxin Pharmaceuticals to create synthetic smallpox, a horrifying act that went largely unnoticed. It is horrifying because like I said, being synthetic, what happens if it gets out? We don't know. We really don't know. And then the WHO has told Ukraine to destroy pathogens in their public health labs to avoid spills and spreading disease. Just like this article said, you know, it isn't just bioterrorism we have to worry about or nations waging war on one another. It's accidents from labs and something escaping, especially something synthetic and which the human body would have no defense for. So just saying, guys, there's a lot to look at here. And as usual, I'll put all of this up in the, uh, in the links in the comments. You know, I don't know if this is going to get struck in, or stricken. I shouldn't struck in. <laughs> stricken from YouTube or not. It might. It very well could. So I don't know if I dare put it on YouTube. I'll have to put it on the backup channel. I can afford a strike there. If I get a strike on the main channel, that's going to be two. Then we'll be gone for two weeks. So 
I'll put it on the backup channel as a premiere so you guys can chat in the chat box while uh, I can hang out with you and chat with you while this thing is rolling. But wow, quite a bit to report on here today on these viruses, synthetic and otherwise. So I'll have to keep our eyes on all of this as always, but wow, just think if this gets out, and it probably already has, and the European uh, Center for Disease Control, which, you know, who knows if they're trustworthy or not, probably not if they're like ours, the CDC here in the States, but they're saying that this is an unknown, a strain with unknown characteristics, so it very well could be synthetic. We'll just have to keep rise on things as always, but guys, now is the time. If you're not right with God, if you're not right with Jesus Christ, now is the time because time is short. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but through him. So if you've had that calling on your life, now is the time to answer it. You might not have tomorrow. We're not guaranteed any amount of time on this, on this, in this particular life. And the next step out of this one is eternity. So make sure you're spending it in the right place. But all who call upon his name shall be saved. The Bible guarantees it. You just have to repent from your sins. Believe he died for your sins on that cross and rose again on the third day. And you can have a whole new born-again spiritual life in Jesus Christ. So come home today. Don't put off that call any longer. Pick up the phone, answer it, and come on home, all right? This time is very short. I'm serious. That's the most important preparation you can make is being right with Christ. Because, like I said, you can prepare for all these different scenarios, right? But they're all coming at us at once, guys. So who knows what you're going to be hit with in your area? You don't know. And, you know, like I said, we don't have any guaranteed time to us here. So get right with God first. Pray it up first, prepped up second. That's why. And the only way to get right with God is through his son, Jesus Christ. So there you have it. All right. That is it for now. I will keep my eyes on all of this as always. Don't forget, like, you, like I said, don'tspeaknews.com is home base for everything that we do. We are having a monthly fundraiser. We are listener supported and pretty much listener supported only. We don't get any ad revenue from YouTube or anything else. We do get uh, about $30 a month from the website ads, but that's it. So if you'd like to support us, all the links to do so are right there. And we thank you very much for that. Without your prayers and your support, we don't stick around. All right. That is it for now. God bless. Take care. Johnny Storm. Don't speak.